<laughs> Wait, hold on, I forgot it. Let me just help you out. Sister to sister. I would never let you look crazy. Oh. Except for on episode five. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, where it's always our moment and we're always having it. On the show today is a very special guest, all the way from season 14, my sister and best friend, Jasmine <laughs> Marie Kennedy. Hello everybody, how are you? How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm good, how are you? You know what, I'm blessed. I um, literally just landed last night from tour. And mm. when Maddie comes a knocking, I will show up. So thank you for having me. And you know, being on this, you know, I feel like I'm at like top tier, like yeah. YouTube level. You've been hitting it like out the park each episode. Oh, thank you. Of course. Yeah, I'm really surprised people are actually watching my bedroom show. Yeah, I knew after the first episode, I knew like this was gonna be a moment. So congrats to you, girl, with this. It's oh, been such a key. Thank you. Yes. Well, you I've... finally won something. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Series. A compliment from you. <laughs> I know, it's so hard. Okay, well, as much as I would love to sit here and suck up the compliments, mm -hmm. we do have a show we have to do. We do. Let's yeah. get it up. Let's so, get started. To the nitty gritty. Enough of the pleasantries. Okay. So, early in drag, your name was actually Jasmine Rikers, yeah. like the prison, but your mom told you to change it because she said if you're going to do drag, then you have to be classy. Yes. Essentially. A lot, a lot of people actually aren't that, like, a lot of parents aren't that involved in, like, their children's drag, but yours is, like, how would you say your mom has influenced your drag? Okay, so, funny thing is, my mom found out probably, like, a couple months after, I would say, that I started. It was, my sister was the only person that really knew mm -hmm. about my drag, because, you know, she'd lend me the makeup, she'd lend me her outfits that she wasn't wearing, that, like, you know, she'd maybe wear to, like, a prom or, like, a homecoming, you know, so let me, like feel it in but when i came out to my mom i also came out that i did drag at the same time so to the one two punch yeah one two i said yeah. you know you know i saved the other one for later we can deal with two coming outs at once so she was fine with that and you know she was very like curious but also my mom as she is i love her she's very like wants to know what's going on and is like has some control over it so at the time, because I was still underage, I was like 15, 16, mm -hmm. she was like, if you're gonna do drag, I want you to like present in at least a way that is palatable and isn't inappropriate for your age. You know what I mean? Because I was- It is really interesting that like she said she wanted you to do something to be very like age appropriate, but yeah. she let you paint like a 40 year old pageant queen. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> that was my drag mother who let me do that. Oh, but okay. no, my mother was like, no, I'll teach. <laughs> she very much was like, be classy, look, you know, presentable. But, you know, painting older was also tea to disguise my age working in mm. New York City. Mm. Because when I moved to New York City, I was 18. And you can't work in, you can legally work in bars, but it's not seen greatly upon if yeah. you're working under age in New York City. So with that, you know, my drag mother told me to like, disguise my age so I wouldn't get clocked going out. So I could mm -hmm. still pay for my bills, if that makes sense. Yeah. The same way that uh, June Jambalaya, she was here recently and she was telling me about how her mom was supportive of the drag to an extent, but mm -hmm. would like go to her shows and would be like, hold out a dollar bill and then take it at the last minute and be like, you're not wearing nails. Is your mom very much that mom as well? Drag mother? Absolutely. Mansi uh -huh. is fully like, I'm only gonna tip you if you look mm -hmm. good. My actual mom is very much so like, in the beginning she was very like, I'm gonna let you do it, and I'm gonna support from a distance, but still be supportive, let you find it your own way. And yeah. she's, whenever she comes, her mom tips me cutely. She's very sweet. She came to my tour for the Christmas tour, made me ball before going on stage, because mm. my mom is so supportive and very sweet with it, but also lets me have my own drive with it and doesn't have any control with it, which I'm very appreciative of. It must have a profound effect, because you're not a crier, so the fact that she brought that emotion out of you, it's just... <laughs> Not a crier at all, ladies and gentlemen. I don't cry the slightest. You know, I'm very hard rock. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only time I've ever seen you cry is whenever you didn't win a challenge. Yeah. Fair, <laughs> I couldn't imagine how I'd feel either. The funny thing is I actually cried every episode, I think. Mm -hmm. I am the Selena S. Titties of, of yeah. 14. In branding. Sense. You know, listen, I... They didn't show my family, like, a message because they already got enough crying takes out of me. Like, yeah. literally, episode three, or that sewing challenge, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna break it down. You probably remember this. I was really upset because I told my family before going to Drag Race, if I'm gonna win any challenge, it's gonna be a ball. I didn't win the ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, because it was so early, yeah. I thought from there, I was like, I have no chance. 
For me, it's Ow. the fact that you were so confident you were going to win the ball. It's a wedding dress challenge. Red, white, and, and I blue. Wore... There was another, and you wore like, you wore a presentation. For a, I wore literally a, a presentation for Miss America that was like red, white, and blue. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was so. It nothing was about not... it said wedding. And you're like, why didn't I win? It's okay. No, literally, I was so perturbed. Like, I didn't under, like, that's when I realized. Okay, you can't like come into drag race with expectations. Mm -hmm. That was the day I realized do not come in here thinking that you're something because you're really not. Because you're really not. I remember having to borrow like an American Spirit cigarette. I remember I was like, I need a fucking cigarette and like crying and being mm -hmm. like, even when we got on the bus was crying. It was a really hard day for me to realize like mm -hmm. I didn't win a challenge. <laughs> Yeah, you were, you were not ready to be humbled. I moment. was not ready. I thought it was going to come a little bit later, but uh -huh. no, like episode three when we just came together, I was mm. like, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> On the topic of you starting drag, whenever you did change your name to Kennedy, obviously most people spell Kennedy with a Y, you spell it with an I-E because there was already another person online that spelled it with a Y. Yeah. But given like your fame in Drag Race, did you not ever think to, like, to change it to the common spelling knowing you were going to be the more famous Jasmine Kennedy? Do you regret not changing your name? Honestly, no. And I'll tell you why. Okay. When I first started out, I realized Kennedy was a very known name. And I resonated so much with her that I somehow wanted to influence that as well because when my mom said Kennedy, I was like, oh wait, that does sound like a really good last name, but it also mm -hmm. connects to drag somehow. And the reason why I spelled it differently was because even though I didn't have a family member that was Kennedy, I still wanted to represent as someone like Jackie Kennedy or Jackie O. But I feel like IE just adds something that's a little bit more quirky and like mm -hmm. not necessarily like fully pageantry because like I am fully pageant, like I'm page mm -hmm. girl down. But like, honestly, I like the quirkiness because I also am like an oddball out of a bunch nine times out of 10. Mm -hmm. I, like, I love that your idea of quirky is like, what if you made the Y an IE? An no, IE. It's I'm like, so, oh my god, I'm revolutionary with spelling. Like, it's so quirky. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, also, it's I'm, so illiterate. I'm illiterate too, because like, you've seen half of my tweets. I can't tweet for shit in terms of like, literacy. So it makes sense that I spelled my last name wrong. On the topic of illiteracy, <laughs> yeah. did you ever learn how to spell Deja's name correctly? Because whenever you were illiterate... <laughs> I, mean, I, said, I, I feel like Deja is a very common, like Deja Vu, very mm -hmm. common. I spelled it the pageant way. You sp I spelled it Deja Richards way. So Deja Richards is a famous, she was a Miss Paradise mm -hmm. and she was a former, or she competed in Continental a lot. That's why I spelled it with that. Mm -hmm. Mind you, when we first meet the girls, we don't have pen and paper writing down our names or we don't have advertisements right. knowing the girls. So I was like, Deja, I, the only way I know how to spell it is Daisha Richards. So I was like, that makes sense. It's only four letters. I spelled it with eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell? I just love that you have more knowledge of like pageantry than you do of just common basic language. French. Yeah. yeah. Just deja vu. Like never knew how to spell that. I would, if someone told me yeah. to write deja vu, I probably would have spelled it Daisha Ru. You're like, oh. I feel like this has happened before. I'm getting Deja Ru. Deja Ru. Yeah, it'd be very that. Yeah. Very flase dog. Yeah, or betriveled. Bitch, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> I literally said, I said, I was goop gagged and betriveled. That's not even a word. Like, I thought that I was like giving an SAT. America was also betriveled. <laughs> <laughs> I can just show you. Yes, T. You on the show identified as a pageant girl. You know so much about pageantry. Uh, how many titles have you won? What what patents have you competed for? I'm just out of curious. I, I haven't looked it up. You looked it up. I know you looked it up. I didn't ask you. I know you <laughs> Okay, let me give let me give this. My entire drag career before drag race was under the age of 21. Mm -hmm. So I technically was not legally eligible to compete for any pageants. But I do have a crown. That is. Miss FIT 2018, ladies and gentlemen. Fashion Institute of Technology. I won. <laughs> College. <laughs> and the only categories were talent. I also competed in the Look Queen pageant, which was hosted at the Monster, which was Bob the Drag Queen's pageant, mm. the year that Allison Mossy won. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, that's that feels more of a competition than a pageant. But yeah. There, but there was we'll money. Count it. We'll there was pass. money. But, like, with you, you went to school for fashion mm -hmm. at the Fashion Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. um, but you still failed the design challenges. Did you get your money back from the university? I'm still paying loans. 
Um, so I went to FIT for advertising and marketing communications because that was the easiest program to get into mm -hmm. that also allowed me to be in New York City. Mm. So that was the reason I applied and went there. Um, fashion wise, I'm all self-taught and my drag mother taught me a lot of accoutrementing, which is basically e 6000 ing everything to your outfits. So I love that you didn't know Deja, but you know accoutrement. Yeah. A C C O U R. Aku, T R E M E N, yes, accoutrements. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. Oh my god, I live. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I can't spell oh this shit. Gosh. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so dumb. Go ahead. Your drag. Okay, so you you haven't been like much of a pageant girl, but your drag is very pageant inspired. Obviously, you revere a lot of these pageant queens. Do you have ambitions like after Drag Race for pageantry? Mm -hmm. I want to win Continental. Mm -hmm. And when I say I want to win Continental, I want to one and done it. And I know that is very hard and I'm waiting for my time. Especially when you it haven't is, done it. Is, and I've never, and honestly, I know my weakest category will be interview and question and answer because I ramble. Mm -hmm. But I know that Continental was the first idea of drag for me. It was the first, it was the first moment I realized this is who I'm supposed to be was a showgirl on stage, you know, as a trans woman presenting in a category that is continental. I know what continental takes and I'm very much so simmering on the back burner and waiting because I want to do it correctly and a way that doesn't seem like, oh, I'm a rue girl, I should win. Mm -hmm. No, I want to go to continental because I deserve to be Miss Continental. Because mm -hmm. I can afford to do Continental now. Don't no, brag about it. Well, that's not bragging, that's just tea. <laughs> <laughs> that's just tea. I mean, girls who can't pay for Continental go to Continental. You know oh, who true. you are. Uh, you know, that like are in the little black book that still owe money to designers. I don't want to be that girl. I want to be the girl going to Continental, showing that I'm worth Continental. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for that moment. Yeah, you're waiting for Continental Elite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said, bet you ain't gonna be ready till you old. Yeah, you, so, said, you said when I'm ready at yeah. 65. And honestly, when I'm ready means when I have FFS in my tits and my body fully done to where I wanna be. Her. That's honestly everything else to be fine with and just really focusing in on interview and mm -hmm. question and answer. Yeah. Because I talk way too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, something like you do stand out at is like your performance. Like you said, it is very high energy. But despite that, you made drag history and being. The only contestant to ever lose three lip syncs in one episode. How did, did Jax it... not lose three lip syncs in one episode? You were the first. Okay, I was the first. You were the yes. first. You made history. You made history. How did it feel in that moment? Honestly, I wasn't mad. Because based on track record, I definitely knew it was my time to go. Did I, in terms of what had happened on the show, did I knew it was my time to go? Absolutely. Do I think I deserve to go home? No, I don't think I deserve to go home on that day, mm -hmm. you know, and I love my sis, Angie, I love you, but I beat you. I love Don't Cost a Thing. Um, it's it's mainly because me and her both didn't know all the lyrics, mm -hmm. you know, I will admit to that. But at the same time, I turned that fucking out, like fully. I was J-Lo from the block. It was, it was a really good number. And even though I didn't win it, I was still happy with what I did with my time on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, I was on for 11 episodes, 13 if you include reunion and finale. I didn't win a single challenge, but at the same time, I was there enough in the competition to make, um, not even a splash, just make a mark. Mm -hmm. And I think that was what I was most cherishable about in the moment. I was like, even if I'm going home on a lip sync challenge, I'm still putting my best foot forward. So it wasn't like I was crushed like mm -hmm. indefinitely because I knew what I was giving was at least something that I was happy with. And I wasn't like, oh, I wish I did this differently. You know, like yeah. my episode, even though I went home, the whole episode was about me. So I really didn't care, mm -hmm. you know, shit. Yeah. You do have you care about track record a lot, which we're going to talk about a little yeah, bit. I do. I bring up track record a lot. I we'll, we'll talk about that in a little Just bit. Just a little bit. Um, you know, maybe, maybe brought it up a couple times. <laughs> I feel like your time on the show, you were very hyper aware of how you, you were being perceived and what you were offering, but at the same time, 
going like very chaotically through the competition as if no one was watching. It's yep. something that Willow touched on, like a lot of contestants in the past, like, you know, the Tammy Browns, for instance, and people that are in that this weird realm. Whenever you were on the show, like how many times were you actually making decisions for you? And how many times were you doing stuff like to make good TV? For good TV. For good TV. Because like moments I think of for instance, like whenever you chose to be a part of Cornbread's group or whenever you chose Daya to lip sync against both times after like a spat with them. I feel like for me personally, everything was 50-50. You know what I mean? I feel like all my choices were either about me or about the show to be completely transparent because at the end of the day, I knew what I was hired for, which was my commentary, me talking in my performance. I never strayed away from knowing what my strong suits were, which was my interview or me confronting a situation, but also too, me as a person, like deep down, I would never want issues to roll over for weeks on end or days on end. I'd always want to resolve them the second it happens because I never think that hostility in a work environment is great, you know? But I always knew the camera was there, but at the same time, I didn't let the camera affect how I was acting. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I think you can attest, I really didn't care if there was a camera on or camera off. I was very the same how I was off camera, off camera. Mm -hmm. You know, very flippant, yep. very said what I said, didn't care how people took it, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I, I actually didn't think that's how you were perceived, which again, we'll talk about in a We'll talk bit. later, yeah. yeah we'll Everyone thought that. I was the villain of our season. I yeah. mean, shit. Well, we'll dissect that. We'll dissect, we'll dissect. That. We'll dissect because I want to know what everyone thought when they said me for the villain. Mm -hmm. That's we'll, we'll save that for DragCon too, because I heard there may be something coming up with mm -hmm. season 14 at DragCon, you never know. How has drag been influential to you in your journey as a trans woman? I think for me, I have always gravitated towards the showgirl side of drag. And that mm -hmm. is, you know, the Mocha Montreses, the Mimi Marxes, the, you know, a Erica Andrews, the, the all the girls that basically stepped on continental stage. That has always been something for me that has made me feel my most at self. And I think with drag in the beginning, I used it, you know, to mask that. But over time, I think I've learned how to embrace my transness into my drag. You know, being happy with where I am at my transition and exuberating that through my drag with showing off my body or showing off, you know, what I think is the most beautiful about me. And I think seeing those girls before me do the same thing with finding their transness is what has inspired my drag and finding my identity outside of drag as well. Did you know or have feelings that you were a trans woman before you ever started drag? Or did drag kind of open that door for you? Or did you already know and drag was more of like an outlet to explore it? I feel like before drag and realizing what drag was, there's always was inclinations in my life of transitioning from, you know, I remember very distinctly like sneaking down to my mom's room and trying on a pair of heels to, you know, dressing up with my sister or you know always gravitating towards the feminine things when it came to like school i know that's so random but always wanting to be with the girls in terms of like gym or in terms of like the group things is because i knew that that's where i aligned with you know so i always knew my identity as a trans woman was there but i don't think it really started to come out until moving to the city i think from 17 to 20, 21, I was still trying to figure out what my identity was. I was so focused on work that I had no time to focus on who I was as a person. And when we went to Drag Race, we're sitting alone with ourselves for eight hours a day at night and just constantly thinking about who you are as a person and what you're being portrayed as. And when I felt like I wasn't being portrayed as myself, that's when I really had that moment of like, this isn't who I am. I'm actually a woman trying to transition into like my true self. And I think that is what Drag Race allowed me to do was to have that time to really focus and sit with my feelings of my identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Damn. Maddie Bolsa says, you got me breaking down, I live. This is, 
I live. I it's haven't like, really put I, that into words yet. This show, like, I like to have fun, casual conversations, dumb shit. Yeah. But I want the audience to learn something yeah. about the guests, too. Yeah, ladies do also, too. I also want to, like, address this for, like, the people that think, like... Oh, gosh. I'm going to just say it. Maddie falls in the LGBTQIA plus community. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know she identifies as straight outside of drag, but I'm sorry. You being a part of this community and your knowledge of the community as well as your influence and what you put into this community, it makes you a part of this community because you put into this effort. So everyone's saying they're like, man, he's just a straight guy. They're like, just drag. Nah, nah. No. Like, I love Maddie and I just want y'all to know that like, Maddie's that girl for me. And like, you really are a part of the community. You are. I'm just, yeah. I'm just getting drunk and wearing dresses, but thank me you. Me too. Very Same. Kind. Tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say though, like drag, like, like drag like it is like dra drag itself is like very difficult for a lot of people like drag race too is like it's the same thing but elevated at a huge scale and it's like very traumatic it's very psychologically mentally emotionally draining yep. you learn about, a lot about yourself a lot about your sisters and like despite like everything we went through i'm glad we got to experience this together and like no matter what happens like online or like what you experience on your journey or my journey where everything takes us to me like you will always be a dumb bitch so <laughs> Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on from the soft <laughs> moment we just had. But luckily for you, uh, you did have someone that was along with you for the journey, your partner, Michael. Yeah. Other than styling all the wigs for you for mm -hmm. your season, how has he helped you, like, on your journey? Like, as a trans woman, and oh. all, like, drag race, but also, like, as a trans woman. He um, makes sure I stay up with my appointments and making sure I follow protocol with transitioning. <laughs> um, my boyfriend, Michael, who's in the back corner over here, mm -hmm. um really has been a not I, I want to say prominent but very prominent part of my transition because he has been the one that has made sure I stay on top of it with that comes me not necessarily keeping up on my hormone intake and forgetting a week or necessarily like not getting blood work so this is you chemically balanced <laughs> this is me chemically balanced so this and without, without Michael this would be even without more off the Michael, no and honestly what it is is I, my mind goes a mile a minute. Mm -hmm. And if I forget something or if I have to get a re-up or if I have to make an appointment, it will go on the back burner and I'll completely forget. Mm -hmm. You know, he's making sure I am trying to get blood work done. You know, mm -hmm. he's helping me make sure with my crazy lifestyle that we have both became accustomed to, to also make sure I am taking care of my mental health and my physical health, you know. And he has been able to help me get to the places that I want to reach. No time limit with it. Just making sure I get to the place I want to be. It's him that has helped me get to the place I need to be to be okay. Yeah. But I feel like with you in particular, you do have such like a big and eclectic personality. Like mm -hmm. what does it take? What is someone, what are the qualities that someone needs to be with someone like Jasmine Kennedy? You need to be quick on your feet. You need to be able to juggle. Physically? A juggle, just general. It's your king. You juggle, general. Three, level headedness. I know I'm insane, but we need to have a level headedness of communication and like not go to the hundredth and be able to bring each other down from that elevated uh, energy. Like I need someone who would be able to communicate with me at my same level. Those actually weren't the three that I thought you were going to say. Yeah. I would assume you were going to say. Uh, patience, uh -huh. good listener, good listener, and a valid driver's license to take you home after you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he that's hits a, all three of those yeah, already. That's what I. But those saying. are like, yeah. You just keep on hitting off Michael, yeah. Michael, Michael, Michael. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I love um, a valid license. On the show, you did have some small beef with like some people. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, like uh, like you had drama with me. You had drama with cornbread. You had drama drama with your inner saboteur. But your biggest drama. That was like on camera, I think was with Daya. Yeah. And there was a lot of discussion of that at the reunion, but I feel like it wasn't really resolved there. A lot of the resolving happened in private, like after the after the reunion, like co private conversations. In hindsight, what do you think the disconnect was and where like there was like a lapse in like understanding each other? Where did the drama really originate from? I think where our real disconnect happened was postseason, where we were seeing things coming out and we may not have necessarily been addressing it the moment it came out. Like a perfect example of when me and Daya were going back 
about the I contacted you Roscoe's fiasco. After like maybe episode eight or nine, I started really feeling uncomfortable about how Daya was perceiving me on the show or her commentary. So I reached out to her. And when we set up the date, when she called me, I initially was not mentally ready to take the call. So she is right when she said that I didn't answer, but I did call her back the next day. And we had a discussion before Roscoe saying, you know, we are upset, but at the end of the day, we understand it's a TV show. So we tried to play buddy at Roscoe's. And I think at the reunion is where we started addressing it. But after the reunion in our hotel rooms is where we really started getting down to the nitty gritty. We just break the surface. But I think with her, for me, I may have been a little bit too expressive or exaggerative or maybe, you know, not someone who was, you know, as maybe calm with their emotions as necessarily she may be or someone who's, you know, not as vocal. I think there was just, a, it, going into competition, we had different wavelengths that we were going into and I think they just didn't mesh up while we were competing. I think we were on two different tracks that never really made sense while mm -hmm. competing but caused tension. I feel like now is the time to address the big elephant in the room. The big elephant? On What's top of Daya's drama, we also okay. had drama. We, we had a lip sync against each other. I went home during that but prior to that we had a big uh, untucked. fight, a disagreement, a disagreement. Untucked. A, a battle of minds, if a you will. Yeah, of quick wit, of I would quick, say. Well, I, I, was, I would say it's about quick wit. We ate up <laughs> and down. So I, I think the easiest way to address this is to like kind of go down like our perspectives of what had happened. Mm -hmm. You first. You want me to go first? Yeah, you, you first. first. Okay. Because I want to hear from you. Because well, I mean, we, we talked about it briefly, but we never really had like a, an extended conversation about it. So... This is a okay. So for me, yeah, this is like the conversation. This is the conversation. Like all the all the fucking interviews that are yeah. like, tell us about this. Like this is the first time we've actually like Addressed really discussed it. it mm -hmm. And like, yeah. So I remember like during that episode. Okay, so let me back up. First of all, whenever we filmed like the Meet the Queens and everything, there were so many people that said, "Oh, Jasmine's gonna be the villain of the season." Yes. A lot of us thought that you were going to be the villain of the season because, like, as people saw, like, you did have drama with, like, multiple people, like, mm -hmm. in, the in the time you were there. And I remember, like, too, that, like, you know, you would go do the confessionals and you'd be like, hey, just so you know, in the confessionals, I said this, that, and the other, I made these comments. And I was like, oh, wow. So she's, like, she's talking drama. She's talking shit about people. Yeah. I was like, I think Jasmine's going to be the villain of the season. So preface that. Put a pin in it. There it is. Okay? There it is. It's right there. It's right here. No one else did that. It's yet. right here. Whenever we go into Untucked, I knew I was going to be in the bottom because they read the dog shit out of me. Mm -hmm. And I was like 90% sure you were going to be in the bottom too. Because likewise. I was in delusion, but yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they, they just got a couple critiques, but I was like, I was like no, okay. it was definitely me and Maddie, but like, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was like, okay, so it's, it's probably going to be me and Jasmine. But again, like I didn't expect to have any drama. I was just like, oh, we're going to do the lip sync. It's going to be what it's going to be. But then there was a moment. <laughs> I think it was Bosco that asked me, he says, so Maddie, what's your, like, you're in the bottom again, what's your mindset? And I was like, well, you know, like, I've, I've been in this position before, I sent somebody home once, um, I'm just gonna have the same mindset. I mean, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do the lip sync, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna, like, do the lip sync, pre pretend that, like, Jasmine's not there, I'm just giving a performance on a stage, and it's gonna, it's, that's it. I'm just gonna pretend like she's not there. And... Again, before, we, before, before I go any further, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say blame it on the edit. No. Untucked is 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes. You get 30 minutes out of a two hour sit down. Yeah. The convert, the argument we had together was much longer than 30 minutes. So much longer. So much longer. So you guys like, it, it's not that, that they cut stuff out. No. But it's, it's that like, they don't have the runtime to focus on a random fight for that, that long. For that long. That would have you know? been the whole episode. If they just did our fight, yeah. it would have been one episode. They paid all that money. They're going to have Taraji come in at least a little bit. Yeah, so, maybe. So I was going into that, and I was like, hey, I was saying all that. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about her. I'm doing my lip sync, yada, yada, yada. And then I remember you standing up and being like, well, girl, I'm not... Because I'm, I'm cause during my thing, I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about her. I'm just going to do my thing. Yes. And you were like... Well, I'm not worried about you either. And I don't remember exactly what you said, but there was something along the lines of, I'm not worried about you. Look at your drag. Look at my drag. What, what, I'm, what, what I'm, I'm selling, selling is that what you're selling. selling. Yes. And I remember it being like... That was a little, that was a little shady. I, a, well, I, a little bit. But, but <laughs> also, too, it's like, in my mindset, 
I just came from like bumfuck <laughs> Arkansas. I I had no money, and then this random queen from New, New York, York City, was like, yeah. "What you're selling? What I'm selling is not what you're selling." I do. I, I perform in New York every night of the week. You know, I live piss eat shit in New York. <laughs> you know, you live in Arkansas. Look at your fucking shoes. You didn't say that. That's what it felt like. But it felt like that. Yes. And the whole time, I'm just like, "Are we about to have an untucked fight? Am I about to have a fight?" With the villain? <laughs> the villain? Because I thought so. I was like, this is my hero's moment. Well, not, not really, but I was just like, I was like this is your moment. I have it. Yeah. yeah. My moment. I, was, I was like, worst case scenario, I was just like, is she saying this stuff for the camera? <laughs> is she saying this for a TV moment or is she serious? I was like, either way, like, I'll give back and kind of feel it out. Yeah. And I remember. But I remember, like, one of the biggest things you were harping on, you were t- talking about track record. Track record. Because you were like, incessant on it yeah you were incessant on it you were, you were like well you've been in the bottom twice now you've been low you've lip synced already and my whole thing was like what well, doesn't it matter like track record doesn't matter it was also the, the song <laughs> that was the big thing that got me like not worried we'll, we'll address that in a second we'll address that in a second too, yeah. with the song because like you're talking about track record and I was like well track record doesn't matter like you could be like you could have won everything to that point and do bad in a lip sync mm. and like go home yeah and also, too, like, whenever you were talking about the song, I was like, well, it's Sugar Mama. Like, you could sell this. Like, I mean, it's, it's a mostly dancey track. Yeah. So, like, you know, you can camp it up, you know, whatever. And, like, you never know. Some people, yeah. they just, like, it's like a, with, I think, Kenya Michaels versus the trees, trees yeah. during, like, the ballad. Like, sometimes you perform it, and it's just not right. Yeah. And I was like, it's like, you never know. And I kept being, like, track record, like... Your track record doesn't matter. It doesn't. But also, too, you kept talking about track record when you never won anything. No, nope, never. You but know, I, you've been low before. You know, I was giving a little Lucy LaDuca, like, I was in the top two. I was in the thing for me. That's yeah. what I was giving track record without saying it. And, say. and the whole time, so this whole time I have this argument, and I'm like, I'm like slightly frustrated. Drunk. Well, well that's a dead thing. So, like, so, drunk. Slightly frustrated because, like, out of nowhere, this random queen that I don't really know from New York really that I thought was going to be the villain has already told me that she's <laughs> talked shit about me in confessionals. Is like randomly coming at me with this, oh, I'm not worried about you, you know? And I'm yeah. just like, this is so disrespectful yeah. and so dismissive. Yeah. I can understand it fully. But then, like, there was also this confusion. I'm like, I don't know if she's being serious or if it's for TV. Yeah. And the whole time, I'm just like, what are we doing right now? Yeah. Like, trying to gauge it. With like drunk goggles and like trying to gauge like yeah. what's happening. It was like a dare challenge all yeah. over again. And I remember like we having that that argument, and I was just like, on the off chance she's not the villain, I can't go out just yelling at her. <laughs> and that's when I was just like, hey, I don't want us to leave like this. Just hug it out. <laughs> hug it this is going home. And you were just like, no, I don't want your hug. No. And then I was mad again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they showed it, but I remember at one point like Taraji P Henson was like saying something, and you were saying something about how like. Oh, you're such an inspiration. And I was like, I remember I looked at the camera and like rolled my eyes. Oh, for when like, I brought up I was, acrimony? I was, I, was like, I was like, please get this moment. I was literally... When I was I'm, so upset. Because I was angry at that point. I was like, I don't know what's happening. I literally... But I don't think it's good. Taraji came in and I brought up acrimony. And like, because me and my drag mother used to watch it all the time together. And I brought mm. it up and I started crying even more after yeah. our fight. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't say like anyone really started it. No. It just kind of escalated. Which it again, was, like because of the time frame... Time frame of You didn't episode. get to see the buildup of it. Yeah. Because it was a long buildup. There was, was a lot of things a simmering thing. And there yeah. also was a lot of things that w- was addressed that necessarily may have explained some of my behavior traits prior mm-hmm. that may have not been able yeah. to show. So now to you, your perspective of the drama. My perspective. We had the first bit of Untucked. We went to lunch. I was already tipsy. We come back. Maddie starts talking and defending herself. And, you know, honestly, and this is a lot coming from me because, you know, I talk a lot. I talk a lot. I could sense that everybody was wanting the conversation to move on because we were both a little tipsy and I was like, oh, she really is like, it's my moment. I'm, you know, I'm not worried about anyone else. And we were like, okay, okay. And that's where I was like, anything else? Like, would you, like, I I was waiting for, I was trying to be better and not cut people off. So I was like, are you done? Because I want to talk now. (laughs) But essentially for me was the second you said, you're going to be the second best lip sync of the night was where my mind went from. Well, I, I didn't say you were. I said, I no, hope you get I the hope. second best lip sync. I hope. Night. And I was the first. But in, in that moment, I was like, oh, this girl really doesn't know about me. Like, you really don't know my drag. So that's where I, because I first 
wasn't in the bottom at that time or at that time my track record wasn't as roller coaster as it ended up being you know mm. i was up and down the whole season but at that time i was pretty consistently high my like high bottom then bottom three there i genuinely was looking at it as like You've been in the bottom before. If you're a bottom again, this is your second time. This is my first time bottoming, not in literal life, but first time bottoming in RuPaul's Drag Race. And at that time, I wasn't really nervous. Like genuinely, like, and this is not any shade to you. This was genuinely how I was feeling at the time and the song and the predicament. I wasn't worried because I knew of the song and I, mm -hmm. I was honestly practicing that song a lot in, yeah. in the hotel room. That was my favorite if, song. If I can interject for a second too, like I will say that like I was not, that was one of my least favorite songs yeah. that I wanted. I was not ready for that. Yeah. I was in a gown I couldn't move in to like a predominantly kind of dancing, dancing track. Yeah. And you still ate. You still did good. I was there. But... You were there. But the last, the last 30 seconds you did really good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so of kind. course, of course. But like for me, like it wasn't the fact of like knowing the song. It was like the di immediate dismissiveness yeah. of it. And because again too, like I was like, we're talking about track record. Yeah. None of us have a good track record. And no, so, none of us. We're episode Five, six. Five, yeah. Sorry. We're episode six. There yeah. is no track record. Yeah. There's nothing matters right now. Yeah. And you kept hammering about track record. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I felt like if you give was, a bad lip sync, you're going. I home. felt like, well, that was the thing. I wasn't. I knew I wasn't going to give a bad lip sync. So that was where I wasn't worried. But like for me, at the time, genuinely. It was my first time ever in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I knew my outfit had a reveal. And I knew I had a saggy crotch, but at the same time, I knew I was gonna give. And like, I, and I wanna say this genuinely, world, when I said, I do this daily in New York City, you know, this is my bread and butter, I shit New York City. No, I genuinely just meant that that was the location that I was doing drag at the time. I never wanted to come in that, mm -hmm. um, Okay, so 11 12 season vibe of New York City where it's like I'm the best because I'm from New York City. I mm -hmm. never thought where my location was was made me better at all. So earlier when I was saying like where was the disconnect between you and Daya? Yeah. That's where I think we never I think talked, that's where we've that never was addressed our disconnect. this before. We never I think addressed that's this our before. disconnect, yeah. I think that's where a disconnect happened because again like the whole conversation I'm like is this real? Are we being serious? Yeah. Is this just for TV? What's going on right now? Yeah. And it was at that moment I was like does she legitimately think, think she's that better I than better. me just because she's from New York? Yeah. And that's the thing. I, and I'm also too, like, I felt like an underdog in the competition. I came from Arkansas, bumfuck nowhere, no opportunity. Yeah. It's physically impossible to do drag full time in Arkansas. In Arkansas. You can't do yes, that. Yes, exactly. I, I was understand. Working, I was stocking vitamins at Target just trying to pay for like the wigs for Drag Race. And I think my biggest goal going into Drag Race was to not be the stereotypical, I'm from New York City the best that was my biggest goal was to not be that because i didn't think my drag was that you know i think i was known in new york city i didn't think i was the best in new york city yeah so for me i never thought of that as a storyline it was more of the fact that my mail and my taxes got shipped there that's basically where i think our biggest disconnect in that fight was because i never wanted you to think i thought of myself better as you it was more of the fact that based strictly on the literal amount of times i've performed random songs in New York City or like been in this predicament where I felt I was comfortable to not be like mentally or physically stressed. I felt like I've been in this predicament before when I was lip syncing yeah. for my life. And that, that's where I think now that like talking about how loud I think that was a huge disconnect for mm -hmm. us because like again like in that moment I was like I don't know if we're trying to make a moment for TV mm -hmm. because one of us are going home mm -hmm. or if we're very like serious. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how serious you were about everything yeah. but in that moment Whenever you said that comment about how like, well, what you're selling, what I'm selling is now what you're selling. selling. I'm from New York. I you know yada yada yada. It felt like I was like, she's either reading me house down boots. But she's either for the <laughs> she's either for the sake of TV being like, I'm from New York. You're not, <laughs> or she's very serious at being like, well, I'm from New York. And I was like, either yeah. way, this is really disrespectful. Yeah. No T. And so like it's, it's like I I knew in that moment I was like, I'm making a moment. One of us are going home. Yeah. And this untucked moment happened. I'm yeah. not gonna let it just slip by. Like, let's have it. Let's have yeah. this random, like, and the moment you match. had. The, it was yeah. great. I don't raise my voice at people. I don't, I, whenever I came back and told my partner, I was like, I yelled at somebody. She was like, what? Yeah. Cause I don't do that. But I was like, you know what? It's TV. My yeah, was was like, like, let's have a moment. Let's have an untucked moment. <laughs> but also, there was like this little tinge, one of like, let's make TV, but also a tinge of like, 
I feel legitimately disrespected in this moment. Honestly, too, I want you to know, I never meant to disrespect you. Like, that was never my intention with that. I think what happened was, I just got to fend- I think we, I, at the end of it, we, I didn't realize where the line was in terms of, like, our reading. Like, can't be reading to, like, oh, we're starting to actually read each other now and feel mm-hmm. some type of way. I think there was a disconnect where me and you didn't catch footing and realize, like, we're just telling each other why we feel confident, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest thing. But I will admit to this, Maddie was the first person I called when coming back because that was probably the biggest thing that I initially thought was going to be the biggest issue on the show was our fight. I genuinely didn't think me and Daya had a problem <laughs> Till I saw the show. <laughs> but honestly, I was, that was the biggest thing I was concerned for because I did also feel bad for how we left. Because like, in up until the lip sync, we were not talking. And then after I apologized. So up until that, like I didn't want you to leave feeling as if I f- hated you. I genuinely didn't. I think up until that moment, I reached my peak and I kind of let everything out at that moment because, you know, we did get into the topic of discussion as to why I talk so much. And then that was kind of the like, that was the thing that kind of took me over and made me yeah. hit hell high, yeah. you know? I, I, I definitely think that like, if we were sober 100%, it would have been, been a little bit more like, wait, what do you mean by that? Yeah, we would have. But there more. wasn't that. There was a lot of just kind of like, I think I know what you mean by that, but let's keep going. Yeah, no, we definitely like interpreted what the person said and then went on. Um, mm. It was very um, much so we were doing improv. <laughs> improv and untucked. Where we yeah, just, it's very yes, yes and. and. It was very yeah. yes and trying to see where it went. But yeah. me and Maddie never were producing anything. Like that's that mm-hmm. fight was not produced. That was strictly no. us going off of each other's behavior in the workroom. Strictly. That, yeah, that was two unstoppable forces that didn't that were drunk understand and each other at all. Yeah. yeah. It was great, But, though. you know, like, the way the world works, now we both live, piss, eat shit Las Vegas. And we're literally, like, neighbors. So, like, that's mm-hmm. the best thing. Like, I think also, too, like, even though we had a fight, Maddie's, like, probably the person I talked to the most, you, Georgia, you know, Deja, because she lives here, but also, mm. like, June, like, Maddie is a very, like, I would call you one of my closest sisters on the season that, like, I have a genuine relationship with, you know? And, like, that's something I hold very near and dear because, like, even though we had a conflict, I still enjoyed you and liked you and, like, you know, like, respected you as a person. And I never wanted that to be, you know, diminished from a 45 minute to an hour conversation that we had in an untucked we were really drunk and mm. we still talk like that to each other but now we understand each other you yeah. know Re- regardless of everything like you know we have very similar experiences and we live in like the same like we both didn't win a challenge we, we didn't win a challenge now we both live in las vegas, we both live in las vegas. Yeah, the only difference is i live in a nicer neighborhood i live in a gated community you have to have a fob to get into my place actually oh yeah. do you have a fob no i have a house yeah. oh. <laughs> this is true you do but I forgot what I was going to say. No, your house is nicer than mine. I'm going to be completely transparent. Also, um, your partner works at a university. So, you know, that is also... Hey, you got income. dual income. Dual income. <laughs> we have dual income coming soon. Check out Anthony Michael Wiggs. Thank you. Dual income, no kids, baby. That's the dual income. Well, we both have two kids, actually. Oh, the kitties? We have the kitties. They're a lot cheaper than human children. They though, are. So. Do you want kids? Huh? Do you want kids? I don't think I have the time. Any drag kids? Oh, God, no. No. Uh, I get stressed out of my own stuff, and I don't even like. I don't dance. know what you could teach. You know, like what would you teach? How to be entertaining? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> what would you teach? How to ruin your knees before you're thirty? <laughs> That's a nature's job. Okay, listen. <laughs> we have to move on from this topic, but before we do, obviously, it's a very heatful moment. Can you confirm or deny that before the lip sync, you went into the bathroom and in the mirror psyched yourself up? Telling yourself about how you had to beat me because you were so angry. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a moment where I left the room. I was like, where I said, you worry about your lip sync, I'm going to worry about mine. I went to the bathroom. You were very strong leaving. Strongly leaving. Started immediately. The second I left that room, started bawling. Crying. Because when I when you fight, you... Which is uncharacteristic. Uncharacteristic of me. But nine times of the time when you fight and when you're angry, you usually cry. It's a common trait with anger rather than sadness. Not a lot of people know that. But I was very angry. And then after I was done like hyperventilating and having a moment, I had to take a deep breath. And I was like, you're on the bottom. It's time to win. 
And at the, that moment, I was never in the bottom. I never wanted anything. I said, you have to show the judges, you know, what you're giving. So I kept on psyching myself up in the mirror, keep on giving myself pop talks. Like, you got this. You're going to beat this bitch. She's going fucking down. She's not going to even have it. She's not even going to last it this whole competition. And then the second I walk out of this bathroom, there's a camera right on me. Right on me. You look pissed. I was, I was so angry. And they came and they were like, can you please come back in for Taraji? I said no. I was like, nope, I'm good, I'm good. And then I started hearing her get ready, and I was like, wait, no, I need to talk about acrimony. So <laughs> then I came, I ran so back in. I, ran, I will say this, I knew the moments to touch on while I was at reality television. I think when getting hired, I knew what my strong suits were, which was interview and storyline and mm. being able to talk. So I knew if I was in there, that would be something that I could possibly use in there so I was like you know what go in there have a moment just to say you were there you know that'd be really awkward if I wouldn't go in to see Taraji P. Hansen mm -hmm. I was like I'm good yeah, like, she's one of your biggest inspirations no she literally is I think I talked about her incessantly before even she even got there like it, she's everything I love her mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you Taraji awkward segue so going into the next challenge I was eliminated but you get to go forward into the Daytona win challenge yeah an acting challenge with fart jokes and bad southern accents. Yours especially was probably one of the most heinous. I was inspired by you. I have a <laughs> solid southern accent. But you, you're from, before New York, you were actually from West Virginia. So I know you know southern mm. accents. Yep. I lived there from third to sixth grade. Yeah. So the accent you had in the Daytona win, explain the voice. My main goal in that was, I just needed to do an accent. And RuPaul was like, can you do a southern accent? I was like, sure. So the first thing that came to my mind was like Paula Deen slash, you know, like more like someone that I grew up with, my mom's friend, you know, she was very Southern hospitality girl, like, you know, like, come get your Sunday dinner and we're going to have a little cocktails and, you know, margaritas by the pool. So that's that a much thought. better accent than you did in that challenge. Was that? That was like somewhat convincing. Was that convincing? I thought that's that, what that I was, was giving. That was close enough. It's probably no. the hormones. It's probably the hormones that gives me a little bit more of an oh. expectation. I was a man back then. But, <laughs> but no, I think I was trying to give something like what I thought of like the most Monongahela West Virginia type of person. That's Monongahela County if you're wondering what that is. But like very like. Yeehaw raccoon hat. The accent you were given was untraceable. Yeah. I it was... was... <laughs> RuPaul loved it. RuPaul loved it, and I can't complain. I think the reason RuPaul loved it is because it was so bad, though. No, everyone knew... It I... wasn't because it was good, because you were less like, Maxine, Maxine I'm, I'm about to mess. Yeah. No, honestly, I went in there thinking very New Dynasty. If anybody watches the New Dynasty on the CW and Netflix, that was kind of my first initial take at it. She was like, can you be Southern? And then first from there, I was like, okay, think of like the first original dynasty. Don't think new dynasty. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, thinking a little bit more Joan Collins and like a little bit more of a Southern twin kind of worked. After my first line, she was like, that's it. I just tried to do that the entire time and just add a little bit more and she liked it. So thank you, RuPaul. I should have been in the top, but it's fine. You should not have been in the top. I should have been in the top. It, was good. It. it wasn't good. Storyline wise, I should have been at the top, at least. Track record. Track record. Well, despite your unbridled confidence in your accent, it was not the best. But here at Give It To Me Straight, we believe in second chances. So we're going to have a redemption moment. I'm going to give you a scenario, and I'm going to show you different emojis, and you're going to act out your response in those emojis. Does that make sense? Okay, act them out in the emojis. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Does so, it have to be in the southern accent, or does it... Please no. Okay. <laughs> no. Got it. No. Okay. And okay. Unless it fits the character you want to go with, this is your art, and it's valid. It's my Either moment. Way. Okay. But yeah, so... The situation is, you just got sent home. I'm RuPaul, I'll tell you to sashay away, and you show your reaction with the emoji I show you. Okay. Okay. Jasmine Kennedy, sashay away. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. Do you have no emotions about this? I mean... I asked you to sashay away. I guess it's fine if you want me to sashay away. I will. It wasn't in my forte or in my in my vision board, but if you want me to, I will. Jasmine Kennedy, sachet away. What was that? Can you say that again? Sachet away. Sachet. 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 Should maybe 
You, you should leave. Don't, just don't touch me. I'm the host of this show. No, no she. No, but I'm. 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 This is Security? my moment. No, this is Security? my moment. No, this is Security? my moment. I'm supposed to have it. No, why not her? Why not? Her? She did a piece of fabric for her for her glamazon. Why not her? Okay, <laughs> Jasmine, Sasha, <laughs> away. Oh my God! Why didn't you send Daya home? Like she doesn't even deserve her. her outfit was wrinkled, and you're gonna send me home? Really? It's okay. my show. I send home who I think deserves. Okay, to go home, okay, Sashay okay. Away. So your favoritism. It's favoritism. I got it. That's fine. It's not like I was getting storyline or everything. It's correct. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. It's not like I sweep the categories and every other thing. I won the pageant, but that's fine. Give it to the other girls. That's cool. You can sweep the Thank floor you. back at your McDonald's job. Baby, away. the NDA is a chop. It's a chop. Where's Reddit? Give me my phone. Give me my phone. This is bullshit over up in here. Done. Spoilers out. And cut. Scene. <sighs> Post. Sashay away. <laughs> this is the Jasmine I know. I just want to say, it has been the world to be, to be a part of this platform. I could never imagine my life without this moment and this experience. That's really lovely, but you need to go. Ex- okay, I just want to The episodes say, are only 60 minutes. Just, Wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you. You have forever changed me. Jasmine, swim away. Just keep swimming. Swimming, 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 swimming. <laughs> and cut. See, I don't even chills. 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 I should have won. Acting challenges more often. I Remember just... that improv challenge that I was on the bottom for? Well, right, please. You should have been but... in the top. Like you were safe for that, right? It was I, the J Lo runway. You should have. I don't want to talk about okay, it. Okay, I don't want to talk about it. On my team, she was the top. Contender. I'm not. I'm not about to open up that can of worms. Okay. I'm trying did to get it, to all-stars. So I'm not calling them out for just a second. Say, me either, Michelle. You didn't read my astrology look at all. Mm. Anyways. Love you. <laughs> but that is the last of my cards and the last oh, bit of time that we have today. so much fun. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, so tell the people, what do you have going on? Where can people follow you? What do you have coming up? Any shows, tours, oh my YouTube, God. TikToks? Oh, my God. Well, the tic- all the social medias, you can follow me at jasminekennedy.com. I'll be going to DragCon with you. I'll be seeing you there. Um, I should have a couple things coming out for Pride as well as some tours coming out in the end of the year, which is super exciting. Um, but yeah, you know, just follow me. Keep um, up to date with all the tidbits that I have going on. You know, I may have some couple things coming out soon, but I don't want to spook it too much yet because you don't want to speak things out yet unless it's fulfilled mm-hmm. and there's a check involved. So things to come. And as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, hit that bell notification so you get no- notified whenever we do a new interview so that you are always up to date. Thank you again, Jasmine Kennedy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank well, you this for is coming. a fun moment. We should have it again soon. Uh, probably not. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> thank it's you okay. Thank you for worried. watching, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>